Here we go. Roll sound. Six jacks and take one. Sound speed. Steven set. That was terrific. Okay, fellas, it's your turn now. Let's go. Behind the Candelabra is based on an autobiography written by Scott Thorson, who was the lover of Liberace from 1977 to 1981. Hey! His first time in Las Vegas. Oh, lost babe in the woods. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Liberace is played by Michael Douglas. Scott Thorson is played by Matt Damon. They are fearless in their performances. It was very important to Michael and Matt that, that it be real. And when we met on the script, and I remember them saying, so they really did love each other. I said, that's really important. He said, yes, it is, to make that emotional truth. So they were really kind of like married, were they? I said, yes, they really were kind of, kind of married. Well, I'm not asking you to buy me anything, Lee. People are going to be jaw-droppingly amazed by Michael and Matt in this. It is a wild, wild ride. I knew Lee Baracci. He was a friend of mine. All I need is to be near you. The mother was a great character and powerful, but in her own subtle, quiet way. Debbie Reynolds, who knew Liberace's mom, uh, does an extraordinary job, as does Dan Aykroyd. Seymour Heller, Lee's manager, Lee's expecting you. He was fiercely loyal and very protective of, of Liberace. We should move you to the Palm Springs house this afternoon. He protected him right until the end of his days. Rob Lowe gives an, an incredible performance as Dr. Stards. I'm going to recommend a deep face peel after the facelift. You're going to look fabulous. He seems to always be eternally high and eternally buzzed as a doctor. Oh, you are doing so well, Lee. Liberace had this fascination with King Ludwig II, who was a gr very grandiose king, who was also a homosexual. He was a very tortured, conflicted man. And uh, Liberace thought he was the reincarnation of King Ludwig. So his excess buying houses and, and over-decorating them and, and giving gifts to people were very King Ludwig-like. And he gave people a great, great show. He's the classic American rags to riches story. The son of immigrants. His father came from Italy. His mother was Polish. How about the ladies doing it all by themselves, OK? The women just loved him. When he played the Radio City Music Hall, sold out. Women were lined up around the block. His music was beautiful. He was uh, one of the greatest technical piano players ever. He had a huge hand width and fast. OK, fellas, now it's your turn. He could have been a concert pianist, but he felt he would never have been a star. Hey! Liberace was one of the first rock stars, in a way. He was the first person to ever look into a camera on television and make a connection to an audience. All you kids under 25, how about that? Okay. He was the first piano player to wear a white tuxedo. And then that led to all the jewels and all the bejeweled stuff. So he made his own two lives. He tried to keep his own life quiet and special. He loved to cook. He loved to be in the kitchen. He was a homosexual who lived in a time when that was not acceptable, especially in show business for his audience. So he had to keep that hidden. But it didn't prevent him from having relationships. Lee really loved Scott. During the time of their engagement, it was the happiest times I've ever seen Lee. He believed, and he rightly so at that time, that if he had come out, he would have lost everything. We had to shoot the Las Vegas house in Los Angeles. So we actually ended up at Zsa Zsa Gabor's house. Welcome, gypsies. Is this a palace? Liberace was an incredibly brilliant performer who was also a shopaholic and completely over the top, just loved access to death. After lunch, uh, I'll give you a guided tour. Great. Exuberant in every way. We had and fun with the excess. Yes. He actually took three houses in a very modest neighborhood, put them all together, ripped out all the walls, and turned it into a kind of a crazy palace, or his idea of a palace. I do all my own decorating. I call this palatial kitsch. He collected any number of things. He would not get one thing, he would get two, at least. So I tried to find things in pairs, because he never seemed to just buy one of anything. 
And in this room that we're in right now, which is a, a recreation of his bedroom, is a very close reproduction. When we started the project, we all agreed that this should be a set because it's so much described him personally. So the main feature of this room is the ceiling. It's Liberace's interpretation of the Sistine Chapel, with the main feature being man, Adam, up here. And in the Sistine Chapel, Adam is being touched by the hand of God, and you see God as well. But Liberace decided that Adam was, I suppose, much better looking than the older God, and that he just kept man. We also have a few paintings on our set. We have one of Liberace playing the piano and also kissing a cardinal. And one of them is of Liberace's mother, who is played by Debbie Reynolds. The Liberace Foundation actually had these paintings. And so we were able to recreate them, but you know, using Michael Douglas in his Liberace makeup. You're looking at the portrait uh, that Liberace had directly over his Grecian tub, as well as cherubs and piano keys. You can tell the guy had a sense of humor. You'll see this very impressive mirrored bar. There are Grecian figures done in frosted glass. And of course, his name. And his name everywhere. He just couldn't leave well enough alone. Everything had to be over detailed. I was the one who had the idea of putting the candelabra up on the piano. Really? That's like your trademark. I know. Who knew? He would get to one point where he would have one house so filled up, he'd go and buy another house just to fill it up full of things. This is uh, what was Liberace's penthouse on Beverly Boulevard in Hollywood. And for the movie, it was fantastic because his other houses are very kind of cream colored and very soft and kind of like flowery. And this place is all black, gray, very shiny surfaces. So it was perfect for the story in the movie because at this point in the movie, there's trouble. So all I do is give and give and give. All you want is what you can get out of me. The guy who owned the building knew Liberace. He's a huge Liberace fan. What was really great is he had pictures of the whole place just as Liberace had it in 1984. What I was able to from the pictures was actually do the exact furniture layout. There's a twin version of this that actually the Liberace Foundation had in their museum. Uh, and I was particularly excited when Barbara found this one because in the movie, we have a scene where both twin pianos are playing on stage. And I was going, how the heck am I gonna get two of them? So it's gonna take a trip back to Las Vegas and be on stage on what used to be the Hilton stage again. So we're gonna get the two pianos back together again, which is pretty exciting. In the script, it says it's dueling pianos, and I always assumed the two pianos were sort of facing each other. That's what you normally see. And in the DVDs that I was looking at, he, they, did, they were side by side, and the way the audience could look at it is with one giant mirror hanging over it. And I went to Steven Soderbergh, and I, you know, I said, Steven, I said, this is incredibly difficult to film, but it was such a striking image and so brilliant. And Steven, of course, went for it. Every opportunity had some reflective surfaces. This whole sort of glittery, sparkly thing had to be constantly reinforced wherever we went. And I personally support the entire Austrian rhinestone business. <laughs> it's too bad you're so big you could try one of these on. So we're standing in the closet that we recreated for the movie. We have the original costumes of Liberace's from the Liberace Museum. You can tell these are uh, covered in Swarovski crystals. This suit must weigh about 60 pounds. This had a cape as well. So, you know, the whole thing probably weighed 120 pounds and he had to do an entire show. Ellen Mirajnik, the costume designer, had to do an interpretation of this outfit, but in lighter materials. Stare as long as you want. I mean, you paid for it. <laughs> this is a fancy show. So you can't put rented clothes on the leading man, both leading men, because it has to look new. So we started to create it from scratch. This is Joyce who's putting the finishing touches on our cape that actually goes to what is referred to as his lasagna costume. Can you see me now? It is all ostrich feathers. We have handles on the inside of there so that Michael can grab this and actually show the audience this is the inside of his cape. 
Liberace wore a number of different things. We started with what was going to originally be silver sequins, because Matt Damon has to go, wow, this is sensational. Liberace! That white coat is modeled after his original white virgin fox coat. The coat was $300,000 and had $100,000 worth of Austrian crystal. We've made it out of fake fur and the same Austrian crystal. There is a 16-foot train. It is lined in sequence. I would say this show, more than any other show that I ever did, was totally custom. This damn coat is the only clothing in the world that has its own car and driver. <laughs> I had a great time writing the script. To tell the story of a man who hid his homosexuality and how even within that time period, he managed to have this real relationship, this real love with this young man in spite of all of that. You know I love you.